stay away from effects. Don't use those because then you're into the same realm of like asynchronous programming issues and you're going to screw it up. Don't use effect. Hello, everybody. It's Friday. We're hanging out in Tech Nation. We have Craig and Ian and Zen and Alex Rickabaugh hanging out with us. And so we're picking Alex's brain and I had to turn the recording on because we don't want to miss anything. Uh, okay, so so we're talking about signals. We're talking about state management and and you know figuring out state management signals. And we're and then the subject of effects came up, and I had mentioned that Ben Lesh visited us recently, and he said don't use effects, which seems so. <laughs> but then Alex also said don't use effects, but we have effects. Okay, so tell us, Alex. Yeah, um, I, like don't use effects is is not actually unique to Ben or myself. Um, the if if you go to like you know MobX, which is one of the kind of OG reactivity frameworks, um, they have they call them reactions, but they have a page on reactions, and the first like line in the documentation is like you probably don't need this. Um, and I think the the reason for that is like effects are very powerful and flexible, but they also have a lot of trade offs that you might not realize you're making when you use them, um, and that creates kind of this disconnect between it looks like when you have a problem where you're trying to do something, you look at effect and you're like, it's clear how you could use effect to do this thing. Um, so it feels tempting to reach for that tool, but it's often not the right tool for what you're trying to do. Um, and so the way I've been kind of learned to, to talk about it uh, that I think hits home for a lot of people is effects are what you use to synchronize between the reactivity system, so state you have in signals and computeds, and the non-reactive real world. So if you want to like write something into a DOM element based on a signal, that's what effect can do for you. And in fact, like you know, templates are just a fancy form of effect in that sense. I don't know All if I'm pushing my luck here, Alex, because I know yeah. it's morning there and you just woke up. But is there <laughs> any way that you can bring up the hack MD while you is there is it is it a because sometimes you explain things to us with code and it's so helpful, but I don't know if this is easy to do in this case. Plus you just woke up. Yeah, I, I can do that. Um, yes. I do have a hard stop in about 10 minutes, but. Okay, right. we, won't, we, will, we, we won't ask too many questions and we can always come <laughs> back to this another day. But just for now, yeah. you can give us the quick version. Cause I, I think this topic is so interesting. Yeah. Um, so here's the the recent like recent example that's been going around um, the team, and we've been talking about a lot. So, like, I have my component. Uh, we'll call it the like select component, right? So I'm implementing something like the selection pattern, where I have a list of options that I want to present to the user, and they can pick one. Um, and so select has like let's let's just do it as a um, as a um, internal state for now, right? So I have my options, and that's going to be a signal of like strings. Um, and so we can kind of make this a template just to really like visualize what we're talking about here, like for option of options, right? Like back option, um, like display an li of the option, um, and eventually we'll make this like clickable, right? So select index. Um, and then I have an index, which is the thing that I'm select I've selected, right? So maybe it starts out with a signal of like negative one. And then when you click into something, it, um, it selects that option. So I'll have a select operation that's like index is number um, and we'll just index set to index. And OK, cool. But what if we want to make the options configurable, right? What if they what if they change? And even in this example, you can imagine that like there's some API to like set the options to an array. And uh, I've been typed this morning. So I change the array of options. But when I do that, I kind of invalidate the currently selected state, right? I have an entirely new set of options that's different from before. And it doesn't make sense to say the user still selected the second one when the second one changed out from under us. So here we'd probably also say this uh, index, right? Revert the index back to the default of nothing selected. Beautiful, everything's great in this component. We're happy. Um, but let's say the options now is coming from outside. 
So it's not a signal that we're setting, it's an input that like someone is binding into us a set of options. And now I have a problem because the way people change options is to change the input, but I'm owning this selected index. How do I clear the selected index whenever the options change? And this is the classic kind of problem where someone would say like, oh, I know how to do that, right? When I wanna like do something in response to a signal, I need an effect. And you would say, okay, like... Um, because we think that's what it's there for. Yeah, right? And like, I'm gonna subscribe to the options and then I'm gonna do index.set to minus one. And Angular was trying to be like, you know, kind of if you're setting signals from effects, it's not really the right way to do it, but you can allow signal rights, right? If you really need to. That was an affordance that we added in there. Um, and this is kind of a code smell, right? We're like reading a signal, but not doing anything with the value. So, and, so right off, if you're using allow signal rights, you should know what you're doing. It, it's it's a it's a sign that it might make sense to look at other solutions instead. Sometimes it's still the right thing to do, and we're actually removing allow signal rights as an option. So the, the, the signal is always to do great to go here. Way. I'm going to show you how to do it in a different way. Um, and I think we're still trying to figure out what the like the most recommended pattern here should be, the most canonical pattern. Um, and the key thing to realize is that we're kind of treating options and index as separate pieces of state. And that's creating this need to like, oh, I have to synchronize one part of the reactive world with another, right? I have this options, it's reactive, I can set it, I get an input signal of it. I have index, it's also reactive, I can set it. But they're kind of independent equal sources of truth here. And I'm trying to ex explain to the reactive system that like, no, like when one of these changes, something has to happen to the other one. Um, I've run into this. What happens when you have more than one single source of truth? It's supposed to be a single source of truth. That's the whole exactly, point. right? And so the, the way you kind of resolve this problem, the, the, what we're trying to tell you is like, don't use effects, right, is often the answer is not try to force these two independent things to synchronize, but figure out a better relationship between them. So you have one source of truth. Um, and so in this case, the thing to recognize is that index is not actually independent, right? The index only makes sense in the context of one set of options. The moment the options change, a selected index for the previous set of options is meaningless. So it's not an independent source of truth. It's kind of a child state of a particular set of options. And so that's what we can express by saying, okay, like we have state here that we're going to compute for this component. And I'm going to have my options as an array in the state object that I'm creating. I need to like return an object here. Um, so I have my options as part of the like state of this component. And I'm also going to have an index, right? But actually, you know, I could do this and remove my state signal. Um, and that gets rid of the effect, right? But now I have no way of setting this um, new state object because it's a computed. So here comes the magic, right? We're going to create a signal inside the computed, create a writable signal. And so what this means is every time the options change, because it's a dependency of our computed, we're going to throw away the old concept of what is the selected index and replace it with an entirely new state container, an entirely new writable signal that's initialized to nothing is selected. And so when we you know set what I love about you, Alex, you take really complicated things and make them simple. This is beautiful. Yeah. This is really not intuitive, right? This is a, a mind shift in how you think about the problem. Because mm -hmm. if, if you hand 100 engineers this problem without giving them context of reactivity and everything else, I think 100 engineers are going to tell you, oh, yeah, I need to track the options, and I need to track the selected index. And like when one changes, I have to change the other. That's a like just natural engineering brain wants to like, this is how I think about the problem. And this is a bit of a shift to say, oh, okay, what I actually want to do is when the options change, 
I want to throw away the entire variable that was like tracking the selected index and replace it with a new one. <laughs> Disconnect the like selection of the previous state from the selection of the current state. Um, but this works beautifully, right? Because now I can click around the UI, I can select things, the state changes, um, or the index gets changed. I can report that back to the user if I want to. And when the options change, this computed fires and just says, you know what, whatever old selected index was, I don't care. It's now a new one, negative one. Nothing is selected. I love it. And it's nice because sometimes I think we we get too close to the code and we need to just step back and say, okay, how should this work? It's like we were talking about earlier before we turn the recording yeah. on, that sometimes you got to just take a piece of paper and pencil and figure out how it's going to work before you start writing code. Yeah. This is beautiful. Um, this comes up too when, um, you know, it, in Angular past, right, you had input and let's say we had like name as a string, right? Um, and some people would, would write their components such that they have, you know, a set name operation that like overrode the value of the input. Getters and setters. I still see getters and setters yeah. a lot. And we don't yeah. really, and, and so we can still use getters and setters, but we don't really need them with signals. Is that right? So yeah. Um, it gives you a different way of kind of reacting to the the setting of the signal, the setting of the input. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about here the, the pattern where a component would like set its own input value. Right. Usually as an override, or if the user didn't provide a value or like there's a you know an operation in the UI that would change this value. A common thing to do is like, oh, I'm just going to write to my input. Um, and if you make this an input signal, then like this pattern doesn't work anymore, right? You can't set this. Like, you know, error, right? Not settable. No set method. Um, and there's a big fuss about this, and and you know some people suggested like, oh, you use model inputs for this, right? Because model input is settable, um, because it it allows the when you set it, you're actually able to communicate to the parent component. It raises an event that like, hey, this thing changed. Um, that's the intention of a model input, but sometimes that's not what you want. And the way you do this um, is, I can have like my name, and I can make a computed that does this signal creation internally, right? So every time the source changes, I want a new signal that contains the state. And I can initialize it to the value of the input. So now I can, call, like, if I need to change it, I can call my name dot set. I set this inner signal. But when the input changes, right, the parent component comes in and says, oh, I have a new name for you. It completely overrides whatever I had previously like set the internal signal to. So it's another form of the same pattern of like, I can create a signal inside of a computed when I want to create this like child state that's, I can set differently, right? I can set it on my own, but the parent can come along and say, no, I have a new like parent state for you, throw away all the children and start again. So it seems like, because I'm getting a lot of questions about state management, now that we have signals, do we still need state management? And I think obviously there are still use cases for it, but what I'm seeing is if you take the time to set it up properly and understand like how to, especially because because we have nested signals, right? And this is the, this is where it gets a little confusing. But if you set it up properly, then signals should be able to handle all of that for you. And then also if you set it up properly, signals is going to keep track of everything for you when something changes in another component or in a service somewhere and you're not going to do anything to like worry about change detection if it's set up properly and this is why yeah. we love having signals in angular because basically alex rickabaugh is doing all that work for you with <laughs> signals in angular and it's all under the hood it works perfectly so if you can yeah. get it set up properly and then get out of the way it's going to be beautiful yeah i think like the the Pursuit of that single source of truth really is the the crux of like signal state management. Yeah. To start really trying to think about the problem as this, these are the things that define what state the UI is in, and everything else is kind of derived from that. Um, you know, if there are colors that need to depend on the values of certain things, you're not trying to like do the synchronization. You're just telling Angular like, hey, 
this is how you get the color of this button. Uh, yeah. This is what I want it to be. Uh, and I if your state off, management gets yeah. complicated, or if any of your business logic gets complicated, which it does sometimes, the best thing that you can do is back up, push away from the computer, take a pencil and paper and figure out exactly how it should work and how it should flow. And then you go back and write your code and it's gonna be a whole lot easier if you do that first. But if it, you're trying to figure out how it flows while you're writing the code, that's what makes it confusing. I, I'll, I'll like end this with one more um, kind of insight, which is the reason why this is not great to do in effects besides the single source of truth problem um, is if I say like, you know, this options changes, right? So I subscribe to it and then I like index.set here. Effects aren't immediate things, right? They run on a schedule at some point in the future. And that means that if I, if somewhere else in the component, I'm like, oh, you know, like options set to a new array of options, like time passes before the effect runs and then like the effect does index dot set to negative one. So there's a period of time where the options have changed, but the index is still showing the old value because the effect hasn't had a chance to synchronize them yet. So you're creating, like, we call it like a glitch, right? Like a glitch in the matrix where you have the chance of observing a state that doesn't make sense. Where you That's have really, old, that makes new sense. Options. And this is why like using effect for synchronization, it's, you know, there are occasions where it's necessary but it is sometimes also not, you know, there are also much better ways of doing it in a lot of these cases. And I think this is the stuff where it's it can be very difficult to troubleshoot this if you're learning. If you're like yes. many of us just stumbling around trying to figure out Angular, this, can, yeah. this kind of stuff can be really difficult. So if you're not, so basically we'll say effects are for advanced users. And if you're not an advanced user, um, don't use effects. And uh, if you have questions, come and hang out with us. Yeah. It's, it's like try other solutions first, right? And if you have to come back to effect, then there's probably a reason for that. But it's yeah. often like avoid the temptation to reach for it before you think through the problem. Love this. Love this. This is so fun. I really love it when you pull up the hack MD. So great. Craig, did you have uh, a question? Okay. Does anybody I've have questions? I know but... you got to go. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Right. Cheers. Thank you so much, Alex. Come and hang out with us anytime. We love you and we love your hack MDs. Oh, oh before you go, will you just drop a link in the chat for us to this one? Yeah, I can do that. Uh... Thank you so much. It's always great to see you. Cheers. Bye. Have a good weekend. Take care.